Hi, my name is Dr. Sandeep Sonone and I bring regards from Mumbai. In this video, we will be having a look at the transthoracic approach which is used for anterior decompression and reconstruction in the thoracic spine. This is a patient 55 years of age with bilateral lower limb non-functional power with sensor involvement and bladder involvement and she was bedridden for one month. The MRI showed that she had a D7 and D12 vertebral body collapse with cord compression giving rise to neurological deficit. The CT scan confirmed the findings and here you can see there is D7 and D12 collapse. The D12 was more symptomatic hence we decided to go in and treat this patient surgically by an anterior approach. Now in the transthoracic approach there are certain prerequisites which can make your life easier. The most important is the table which should allow a good amount of break so that you can open up the side which you are operating on. Good illumination is very important to see the structures which are in the deep cavity of the thorax. And you need certain instruments like self retaining chest wall spreaders, uh, rib cutters and a good diverse retractor to retract the lung and the soft tissues especially the diaphragm at the lower level. This is the position of the patient. We, I usually keep the patient in the bang lateral position. Break the table open so as to open up the cavity from where I am approaching the patient. All the bony prominences should be well supported, well padded. The abdomen should be preferably kept free. And the iliac crest should be kept open and draped in case you need a anterior graft which I usually do in anterior reconstructions. So with the patient in the lateral position, the incision is along the 10th rib which gives me good enough exposure of the lower thoracic vertebrae. After cutting the skin and the subcutaneous tissue, I usually raise a little bit of subcutaneous flap so as to identify my muscles making them uh, demarcating them quite well so as to aid in good suturing at the end of the surgery. I usually go in and identify the anterior margin of the lat dorsi muscle which and separate it from the underlying ribs and the intercostal muscles. Uh, this is extremely important uh, regarding not only the latissimus dorsi but other muscles as well so as you need a good suturing at the end of surgery uh, otherwise these patients can land up in weakness of the paraspinal muscles and muscles of the chest wall. After identifying the rib that you want to excise, make sure you expose it posteriorly up to the angle of the rib and anteriorly up to the costal cartilage. This will give you a sufficient exposure into the cavity which you are going to uh, open. Meticulous exposure of the rib is extremely important. Good dissection is of paramount importance to prevent injury to the neurovascular structures proximally and distally. Here you can see at the proximal end, I am going from posterior to anterior in the direction of the muscle fibers, avoiding injury to the muscle fibers. At the inferior margin of the rib, the dissection goes from anterior to posterior, again making sure that you avoid injury to the neurovascular bundle, which runs along the lower margin of the rib. The anterior exposure should go right up to the costal cartilage in case you are planning to expose the lower uh, thoracic vertebral bodies. After adequately exposing the rib, you need to dissect the rib of the underlying periosteum. Here I am trying to demarcate the lower margin of the rib which is slightly pointed, separating it from the intercostal vessels and the intercostal nerve. Again, making sure that the whole of the rib, the margins of the rib are released is very important for you to separate the ribs from the underlying structures and the underlying pleura making sure you dam avoid damaging the uh, lung tissue. So the meticulous dissection has to go on the under surface of the rib, dissecting it from the periosteum proximally and distally, making sure at the lower margin, your periosteum stays flush to the lower margin of the rib, venturing into the soft tissues and injuring the neurovascular bundle. After exposing the rib from underlying the, 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 the pleura, you need to dissect it off right up to the anterior margin up to the costal cartilage and posteriorly you need to go right up to the angle of the rib for you to get a good uh, resection of the rib which also can be used while putting in a graft or for anterior reconstruction as a supplement in addition to the tricortical graft or the cage. The rib is then resected anteriorly at the margin of the rib with the costal cartilage.
and posteriorly at the angle of the rib. One should make sure that the edges of the rib, of the resected ribs, are nibbled off so as to avoid injury to the pleura. So that's the neuromuscular bundle which is running along the inferior margin of the rib which has to be identified properly before you take an incision in the pleura. The pleura is then incised by a small by making a small nick in the middle of the pleura making sure that you don't damage the underlying lung tissue dissecting it off proximally and distally the incision in the pleura has to go at least 5 mm superior to the margin of the intercostal nerve and vessels to protect them here i am putting inserting my fingers inside protecting lung tissue and the underlying structures and completing the incision it is imperative that you inform the anesthetist by opening the pleura after opening the pleura make sure that there are no adhesions between the lung and the underlying pleura or the diaphragm which can happen in case of tuberculosis the self retaining chest wall retractor is then inserted and the cavity is opened up sufficiently for you to get a good visualization of the glistening diaphragm and the underlying structures identifying the structures is very important so you need to identify the thrust of the diaphragm the aorta and the 12th rib so i usually start by palpating the 12th rib if it is present which is confirmed on the preoperative x-ray count the rib upwards up to the 10th rib and incise the periosteum or the pleura on the anterior margin of the vertebral body along the anterior margin of the rib head the incision is carried distally into the thrust of the diaphragm after making sure that you open only the visceral layer of the pleura you try to expose the intercostal vessels by doing a blunt dissection proximally and distally medially and laterally and in between the two layers of the pleura you will find the intercostal vessels the intercostal vessel just beneath the thrust of the diaphragm at the level of the d12 d11 is quite big and sometimes can be missed quite easily meticulous dissection and exposure of this vessel is important as if you damage this vessel and it starts bleeding it's very difficult to control it because the thrust of the diaphragm won't allow it to do it for limited exposures especially distally at d12 l1 i usually make a small incision in the thrust of the diaphragm and try to expose the anterior margin of the psoas muscle by doing a blunt dissection with a sponge holder again here exposure of the anterior margin of the psoas is extremely important for you to go for you to avoid going into the substance of the psoas and damaging the nerve roots after identifying the intercostal vessels they are ligated or clipped or cauterized depending on whatever your preference is making sure that you expose the disc space proximally and distally at the level you plan to do the instrumented uh, uh, fusion and decompression the intercostal vessels are then tied or clipped depending on your preference proximally and distally making sure that the anterior clip or the tie is at least 1 cm away from the junction of the intercostal vessel with the aorta I usually begin by exposing the proximal and the distal disc spaces before I enter the cavity. The vertebral bodies are identified proximally, the normal vertebral bodies, making sure that good exposure is achieved proximal, anteriorly as well as posteriorly in case I am planning for instrumentation at that particular level. Similarly, you need to go down and expose the lower vertebral body, whichever you are instrumenting. Avoid going into the substance of the pathological tissue or the body, whichever you are operating, whether it is tuberculosis or tumor, so as to avoid bleeding. Try to palpate for normal bone. Look out for cavities for you to have a good idea or judgment about the bed of the graft or the cage that you are going to insert. So that's the rib head which might have to be resected for you to reach the pedicle and do a good anterior cord decompression the lower disc space is similarly incised so the upper and the lower 
vertebral bodies are prepared quite meticulously and then you can start the decompression of the pathological tissue. Confirmation of level is extremely important. Identification of normal vertebral bodies is important for you to have a good result. Decompression is done in a standardized fashion by debulking, keeping the margins initially intact unless you are doing a tumor excision and then finally removing the margins of the pathological tissue, the anterior posterior, where you need to expose the cord and excise or incise the granulation tissue which is engulfing the cord giving rise to a constricting effect and neurological deficit. The cord is meticulously decompressed. In case I am planning an anterior instrumentation, I usually finish off the basic steps first like inserting the staples and the screws before I go in and put an interbody spacer which is either a cage or a tricortical eyelet crest bone graft. This is very important for you to get, keep a good margin between the end plate and the staples or the screws which you are inserting so as to give a good support for the screws or you might land up with end plate fracture. The screws are inserted right up to the opposite cortex also making sure that they are parallel to the end plates for the end plate cancellous bone to give them good support avoiding stupid outs. The anterior spacer is then inserted whether it's a graft or a cage the rods are applied and the top nuts are tightened after giving adequate compression, correcting the deformity and also giving a good solid construct anteriorly. Before closure, a final confirmation is done of the decompression. Adequate space should be present between the anterior spacer, the graft or a cage and the cord so as to avoid impingement of the spacer or the cage into the canal. The sponge is then removed and adequate ventilation of the lung is permitted. A final check is done to see whether the lung tissue is damaged. The edges of the crust of the diaphragm are identified and meticulous closure of the crust of the diaphragm is very important to prevent herniation of the abdominal contents into the thoracic cavity. After meticulous closure of the crust of the diaphragm, we now proceed to closing the cavity. A good wash is given, again ensuring that the lung tissue is not damaged. An intercostal drain is inserted at the lower level and the chest wall is usually tacked with a non-absorbable suture like a proline, encircling the proximal and the distal rib. Three such tack sutures are taken one at the anterior most margin, one at the posterior most and one in the middle. The cavity is then closed by inserting a towel clip, making sure that you don't damage the underlying tissue. The non absorbable sutures are tightened. The rest of the gap is closed with absorbable sutures. The deep muscles, the latissimus dorsi, the subcutaneous tissues, and the skin is then closed. So that's the post-operative x-ray of this patient showing a good placement of the cage, good position of the screws in the middle of the vertebral bodies and good correction of the deformity that is kyphosis. It is imperative that maximum surface of the end plate should be covered for even distribution of the load across the end plates to the spacer whether it is a cage or a graft. So via a trans thoracic approach one can really achieve a good decompression, reconstruction and instrumentation right from the upper thoracic bodies D3, D4 downwards up to the lower lumbar bodies that is L1 or even an L2 via a small incision in the crust of the diaphragm. So thank you very much and I hope you enjoyed the video.